We are halfway through September. Fall is knocking at our door. Monday, at exactly 2.19 in the afternoon Eastern Time, summer will officially pack its bags and leave. Every single day right now, we are losing two minutes of daylight, three in the northern states. In Birmingham, Alabama tonight, sitting there on the eastern edge of the central time zone, the sun will set at 6.51. Those long summer evenings fading as her attention shifts to Halloween and the start of the onslaught of deep bear clinic weather systems across the country. Starting to see a little bit of tropical activity picking up near the Cape Verde storm track. This storm here may become active in the next few days. Here's a look at the southern North Atlantic showing a circulation starting to come together. But there it goes lifting to the northwest. So it appears at the current time that may pass north of the Leeward Islands. Now Bermuda you can barely see it. It's right there. The GFS has shifted a little bit from yesterday, taking that closer to Bermuda. Yesterday's run was going more like that. The European taking a similar track, cutting right across Bermuda. So we're going to have to pay close attention to these models because this is not necessarily the final word. Anything beyond five to seven days, just not forecastable with confidence. You can see that this is already a good eight or nine days away. In the East Pacific, Tropical Storm Mario moving northwest at 11 knots, the sustained winds 40 knots, and it is on the decline. The surface circulation will pretty much remain in the same area, the mid and upper level vortex and the moisture especially will be moving into the southwestern U.S. We can see that on the 850 millibar composite this is up at about 5,000 feet MSL. It does intersect the terrain in the plateau region, the Great Basin. But down here in this part of the U.S., you can see the moisture, the green lines. Those correspond pretty closely to dew point. So we pick up that hatching right there along the border and the cross hatching, even richer moisture down to the south. You can watch all that come northward during the day tomorrow and especially on Thursday. So that hatching well up into the deserts of California, western Arizona by Thursday afternoon. By Saturday, we start getting a bit of drying from the west. And looks like some pretty strong dynamics out in the central U.S. Let me back that up, see what's going on right there. I can see a weak frontal system entering the Great Plains, something like that, maybe a little further to the south. Then we go up to Friday yeah, things become increasingly dynamic. This is Friday night, low-level jet. And then Saturday night, 50-knot classic low-level jet across the Great Plains. So this indicates the possibility for severe weather somewhere in the northern U.S. So that will have to be monitored. Shifting eastward for Sunday night. So we're talking about the Sunday to Monday time frame for the northern plains. And here comes a cold air advection low-level jet through the Dakotas for Tuesday. So probably some cold weather there for next week. The current weather chart across the U.S. showing a rather quiet weather pattern. However, we do have this Pacific Front moving through the Dakotas. The tail end of that moving through Colorado and Utah. On the East Coast, we have a Bear Clinic weather system off of the Virginia coast. We have coastal flood advisories, wind advisories, high surf advisories, and flood watches that will continue grazing the coast for another day or two, then gradually move to the northeast. There's a closer look at that area. This afternoon, we have flood watches extending from east of Fredericksburg all down the Virginia coast to North Carolina between Murfreesboro, Elizabeth City, and Powell's Point. Those run through late tonight. The North Carolina Barrier Islands under wind advisories earlier today. Coastal flood advisories also cover Delaware from Smyrna to Dover southward. Gale warnings in effect from Atlantic City, south across Chesapeake Bay to Pamlico Sound. And that is due to northeast winds gusting the 45 knots, seas 8 to 13 feet. 
Temperature-wise, we had upper 70s and 80s across the northeastern U.S., pockets of upper 60s in Virginia in rain-cooled air. Moving west of the Appalachians, we get into fair weather and warmer conditions. 80s in the Great Lakes and 90s from Louisville to Champaign and Springfield, Illinois, down to the Ozarks and Memphis as a minor heat wave continues to be underway. In the southeastern U.S., numerous showers and storms all through Tennessee into Mississippi and the New Orleans area, other showers and storms through the western Ozarks. Temperatures today ranged from the 70s in North Carolina to the 80s in South Carolina and Georgia, 90s from Florida westward to the Mississippi River, the hottest weather expected at Texarkana and Shreveport with 96 degrees. In the southern plains, we find numerous showers and storms breaking out across the panhandles in western Oklahoma due to a lack of capping. Temperatures today were generally in the 90s. We did find 96 in the Laredo and McAllen area, and of course 96 around Texarkana and Shreveport. We did find 80s a little bit further west, across west Texas and into Oklahoma. In the northern plains, warm weather continued in the lower plains, the Corn Belt, and the Midwest with lots of upper 80s. Cooler or modified polar air was crossing the high plains into the Dakotas and Nebraska, bringing 70s there and 60s in Wyoming after a cold start to the morning with 30s and 40s there. The Storm Prediction Center has a slight risk for severe storms across western Nebraska, centered on the North Platte area, we may see an isolated tornado and a few storms with strong gusty winds. In the Rockies today, temperatures were in the 70s, including at Denver. We did see 80s to near 90 in southeastern Colorado, 80s through the Four Corners area down into New Mexico, and in the southwest deserts, another blazing hot day, 105 at Phoenix, 105 at Needles, 103 at Yuma, and 99 at Tucson. 91 degrees for Los Angeles, mid to upper 90s through the San Joaquin Valley, and another hot 81 degrees for San Francisco. Down to the south, we can see the start of that moisture surge with Tropical Storm Mario down there that will continue to ramp up over the next 48 hours. And on the central California coast, Monterey Bay to Half Moon Bay, we had dense fog advisories earlier today. In the northwestern U.S., quite cold through the northern Rockies. Yellowstone National Park expecting a high of 53 today, but that warms into the 60s and 70s in the Bitterroots. And as you go west, we pick up 80s. 84 for Seattle with 89 at Portland. And we have dangerous fire weather conditions in the western slopes of the Cascades. A red flag warning for this afternoon and evening for Seattle, Tacoma, Olympia, Everett, Bellingham, eastward to the Cascades. That's due to east winds, 30 gusting to 45 miles an hour with 30% relative humidity. Heading west into the Pacific, there's another Pacific system lurking off of the Washington and Oregon coast. Pretty good punch of cold air flowing southeast. A little bit further north, pressure gradients are increasing across southeastern Alaska. Some of our first fall season storm warnings take in shape as a high wind watch covers all of the western Alaska Panhandle from Prince of Wales Island across Baranoff Island up to the Yakutat area. That runs this evening through Wednesday evening southeast winds gusting to 60 miles an hour with marine storm warnings also in effect late tonight west of Baranoff Island. Let me show you that storm. I mean, really, how many YouTube channels show you this kind of detail? This is the area we're focusing on, a very compact, intense system moving up through the Gulf of Alaska. There's those strong pressure gradients. And going into tomorrow, some gradual improving as a tiny bit of ridging builds in. Unsettled for a couple of days and then another fire hose of moisture coming in for Friday. Then looking at Canada, we have a mixture of fog and wildfire smoke advisories across southern Northwest Territories and northern Alberta, north of Lesser Slave Lake right there. 
frontal system moving through Manitoba, much cooler air behind that. But ahead of it, there in the Hudson Bay region, 80s this afternoon, Fort Severn, 82, and the all-time September record there is 85. Here's the current plots. Uh, Fort Severn cooled off to 77 due to showers. But look here at Peewanuck, which is south of Winesk, 86. That is tying their all-time September record. And they should normally be seeing a high temperature of 54 to 56 right now. So that is certainly noteworthy. Let's take a look at those temperatures. You can focus on your home city. You can see that band of 105 there from Needles to Phoenix. That 108 here is Death Valley. And this is Area 51. How many YouTube channels give you the weather at Area 51? All right, we're going to see a continuation of that heat wave there in the central U.S., the Ozarks, the lower Mississippi River Valley. Lots of low 90s, and that will continue through Thursday and Friday. Gradually gets replaced by some cooler air from the Pacific Northwest. However, it's not going to make much headway through the Midwest region. So by the weekend, 90s continue in Texas, 90s all through the Deep South, and 100 again for Arizona. Here's how things looked in Nebraska late this afternoon. A outflow dominant storm complex moving through the North Platte radar site, which is some distance north of North Platte. This is about 10 miles ahead of the storm, so I'm not going to really expect too much severe weather within that. But down to the south, it definitely has a more discreet appearance and what appears to be a tornadic storm around McCook at the current time. We'll focus on the Goodlin radar, get a closer look at that. So we're waiting for the data to come up. And there's our look. This isn't optimal. We're up at about uh, 7,000 feet, which is within the cloud. But it certainly has a HP structure. If we look at the base velocity, yeah, that's a definite meso, not a TVS. However, definite rotation within that storm, quite strong. We've got about 40 out and about 40 in. So that's 80 knots of shear across about three or, f yeah, three miles. Now, another aspect to this, especially when you're looking at a distance, is to look at the higher tilts. We go up to the top of the storm and get a kind of a 3D structure in our head, what's going on. This is a little bit too high. This is up at about 48,000. It's where we pick up the higher reflectivities right here at about 40,000. So that's sitting about right there. There's probably some other strong tops a little bit further south. We drop down. Yep, there's the main core. The fact that there's two cores, that tells me there's a little bit of a multi-cell structure going on, or at least some pulsing. Um, yeah, this kind of draws my attention. That could be a little donut hole core, especially right in here. That's possibly a beware. I'm not sure we have enough. To, yeah, okay. That Yeah, that's certainly a beware right there. So no wonder they're calling that tornadic. So we drop down further. That's sitting right over the notch. And the relation of that to the low-level rotation, that's pretty close to that. Yeah, right there. Uh, the area of circulation contracting a little bit, weakening, 34 in and 25 out. I really should be using the storm relative velocity. I've not set that up, but I'm giving you kind of a quick look what's going on and possibly two areas of rotation to be monitoring. Of course, you want to try to get consistency with the higher tilts. Yeah, this one is probably becoming dominant. So that tells me that the uh, main hook is probably back in here. Maybe something like that going on. So a lot to look at at this storm, although, you know, of course, the view of that is not really optimal. The precipitation forecast going into tonight shows rainy weather all across Nebraska. Going into tomorrow, Lots of precip across South Dakota, northern Nebraska, another area of rain from New Jersey through Maryland, and of course down there in southern Florida. 
and you can focus on your favorite area going into Thursday. We do see that vast increase in Southern California, 60% chance of rain in the Los Angeles area and spreading up towards Las Vegas for Thursday night. Friday, lots of rain through the Mogollon Rim into northern Arizona and southern Nevada. Then a bit of clearing going into the weekend. There's Saturday night and Sunday. And then Monday looking like this. Nothing really specific. A little bit elevated chances all from Texas into the Great Lakes. And that's going to be about it. So let's head into the forecast. The surface analysis is getting very complicated as we go into fall. In fact, I'm going to have to make some changes in my map drawing program here because there's a lot of minor systems to keep track of. We've got this East Coast system, one through the central U.S., and a series of fronts are going to be moving into the northwestern U.S. So let's take that forward going into Wednesday. For the afternoon, we've got that moisture spreading up into far southern Arizona, California. No significant severe weather expected anywhere in the U.S., but numerous storms all across the central U.S., the northern plains, and into the southwest deserts. The monsoon will also be active in southeastern Arizona into New Mexico. Also quite a bit of rain in southern Florida. Then for Thursday, that moisture spreads up into the southwest deserts. Around peak heating, it is looking like this. Looks like some of that moisture making it into the San Joaquin Valley and the Sierras. Numerous showers and storms all through there. Also storms through the central U.S. along this front. Then we go into Friday. Storms will start clearing out across California, moving into the Great Basin and Four Corners area, and gradually dissipating. Also, numerous storms across Iowa, southern Minnesota, adjacent parts of the Dakotas, Wisconsin, and Illinois. Saturday looking a little bit better nationwide, but we've got this Bear Clinic boundary right there in the Northern Plains. New Pacific system moving inland, sweeping rapidly eastward through Montana, Wyoming, and the Dakotas ridging building into the east coast area sending more dry air southward here comes that front into the midwest bringing a vast change next week through the midwest and corn belt another pacific system coming inland so hopefully that'll bring some rain to california and another pacific system moving into the northwestern u.s so things are becoming quite active that will do it for this episode of Forecast Lab. A special thanks to our newest supporters. Uh, back on the third, Dr. Yuri Mon, and a renewal from Brock Austin. I do need to emphasize that your support is vital for keeping this program going. There's a lot of hours that go into this and it is a one man show. So if you wanna see this program continue, we do need your Patreon support. If you can't, help on Patreon, that's fine, but please spread the word on social media, Instagram, Facebook, wherever you are. That kind of grassroots support is very important. And to be honest, I don't do any of that myself because I'm pretty spread out as it is. So anything you can do to help keep the program going is uh, very appreciated. All right, we'll see you back here on Friday for another edition. Hope you have a great middle of your week and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.